These are unpredictable and uncertain financial times. That's what makes them interesting. We live in a time of upward interest rates. I don't know so much producers. I don't think so. I think interest rates are flat for now, at least until 2017, maybe 2018 now that Brexit has happened. But I'll accept my producers suggest we're in an upward interest rate cycle. I think they're wrong for the record. Time will tell. High consumer indebtedness, I'll buy that. And certainly an economy which is under a huge amount of pressure. At least in the first quarter of 2016, we saw the South African economy contract. When is it the best time for franchising? How do you choose a franchise brand? This is The Moneymakers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, two interesting people. Riaz Ghani is Joint Chief Executive of Kit Kat Group and before and is with a K and a K. And before you ask, their Kit Kat is much older than the Nestle Kit Kat. I think it was 1953 that they started a corner cafe with the name Kit Kat after an extinct American bird. Uh, and then Nestle came out with the chocolate. But they had a settlement. Everyone's getting on fine now. Richard McIver, General Manager of Cash Converters, both members of YPO, to talk about franchising businesses, the trends in markets. So often we look at franchise businesses, Richard, as Steers or McDonald's or Mug and Bean. I mean, the world of franchise, I think there's something like nine or 900 or 1,000 franchise concepts available in South Africa. Uh, probably close to that, if not more. And uh, franchising, it's traditionally been seen in the food industry, uh, quick service restaurants, petrol and the like. Um, but you would find that a significant portion of our GDP is done through franchising that's outside of that environment. So as an example, retail like Cash Converters is in. Uh, in fact, even engineering businesses are starting to franchise. And franchising is all about the distribution of products and services. It's a particular way of distributing them. And creating business systems. And for Absolutely. so many people with bright ideas, they think they're going to business for themselves. And yes. suddenly, the process of setting up a business is arduous, it's complex, and it's quite nice to have a plug and play because it's hard enough even in a franchise environment to run the business of the business. So that's the benefit that the franchisee gets from the franchisor. It's effectively taking the proven business model and implementing that, the Americans call it the cook, cook, cookie cutter method. Yeah. Um, but it really is, it's taking a recipe and saying, this is the proven recipe to bake this cake. And as long as you do it in this sequence with these ingredients, you'll be successful. And that's really why uh, franchising in general is much more successful than going at it alone mm -hmm. because you have that proven <coughs> recipe. And in our business, we've been around in South Africa now for 20 odd years. We've fine tuned that recipe over the years, over four different economic cycles now, in fact. How many cash converters are there? They're operating around about 75 in Southern Africa okay. now. And yes. do you see the cycles come? I mean, in tough economic times, people bring washing machines and wash by hand and they pawn the washing yep. machines effectively and hope that nobody buys it. They can buy it back next week once payday comes around. So, so the, the economic times definitely indicate to us uh, what's what, what, what's happening in, in the microcosm of the average family in South Africa. We can see it in terms of our numbers. Our retail business is up over 20% this year alone. And that indicates to me that a large chunk of people are buying into the second-hand market and getting good value for money, but they would maybe traditionally be purchasing or would prefer to be purchasing new. Um, so those are the type of things that actually happens. You can really, it's almost like a barometer of the, uh, of the uh, economy. Riaz, are you franchising KitKat? Nope. No, you're not in the franchise market, which is no. fine. Um, but but uh, just give me a sense of the state of the economy then. If you're in the wholesale trade. You um, will see people who, who, who come to your door and are looking for bulk. They're looking for discounting. They're looking for product that they can then move through through their various outlets. So that, that's the one aspect of the business. Uh, the other aspect is the retail component. So we seem to call ourselves a bulk retailer. Uh, you'll find a housewife that will come into our stores once a month and shop in bulk uh, and she's bound to save at least between 15 and 20 percent on, on a monthly shopping bill. Uh, other than that we now have what we call KitKat Express which is a smaller little model of stores. It's, a it's got just two little legs to it. Two, two, it's got two pieces rather than four so, or eight. So a 200 mm -hmm. square meter store very similar to a franchise type concept. Yeah. However company owned then what we do is we give 50% of the profits that we make in that store to the staff that run the store. So uh, sort of a different model. I mean, you know, franchising is successful in the food, ready-made business, yeah. ready food business because of the model. Like you said, this is the recipe, follow the process and you're bound to make a profit. That model works. But in the trading environment, I seem to find that it, it doesn't really work that great. Uh, I mean, we have... In South Africa, a lot of franchise stores in the supermarket business. Yeah. 
uh, we know that Woolies, they, Woolies backed out of that. I mean, they, they had the franchise model that didn't work for them. Pick and Pay still does it. Shopper, I think, is all wholly owned. Pick and Pay still yeah. does it because they sort of entrenched in it. I mean, uh, if they would want to get out of it, trust me, they would. Uh, because it's not easy in our type of business. No. Uh, franchising, however, is a great model to have. The profit share, of, uh, the profit share component of it. I mean, how effective is is that in terms Working of working of loyalty and in terms of empowerment? Frankly, well, empowerment and, and also creating responsibility. Uh, I think that's where we lack as you know employees or employers in this country. We're not giving enough responsibility to our employers, uh, and, and it's working. Uh, we're finding our pilferage rate is is not even a half a percent, uh, which is amazing. Uh, and our staff really take responsibility and we're going on to sort of, you know, different types of technology now where we will not even have a cashier in our store. So our till points will be totally self-checkout. Customer could come in and do our own little I mean, that, there's a lot of trust involved in that, and I've watched it happen in the United Kingdom. You go through British airports nowadays and you go into some of these shops and it's a very confusing, but you, you get through, uh, but there's always somebody watching to make sure that you scan every single item. I mean, and in a country like South Africa, uh, where pilferage is a problem. Well, the advantage here is, you know, we have five employees per store. They could all be watching you. Mm. Uh, it doesn't have to be one individual that's getting paid a salary to perform one job. Now, Richard's seen 20% growth in his business, which in this environment, fr frankly, is quite extraordinary because it's in the value side. You're in the value part of the South African economy. Are you seeing people trading towards, uh, gravitating towards your offerings? Yes, undoubtedly. Uh, we're getting a lot more retail housewives coming into our stores. Um, and naturally, they're finding a saving, so why not come in? But, but, but who's your biggest rival? I mean, is, is Macro your biggest rival or Jumbo Cash and Carry? On, on the retail front, it would, be, it would be Macro. On the wholesale front, we're finding a huge, highly competitive, small trader that's now coming into play on the wholesale side. Uh, unfortunately, you know, with the laws that we have in our country, I'm not saying government is not doing, it's not doing anything about it. I mean, they've started. Uh, you should have read the papers where mm. SARS is clamping down on the cash and carry sector. Yeah. It's helping us because being a legitimate trader to compete with illegitimate traders, very difficult. But, but we're seeing the trend, I mean, in the U, again, I use the UK example, but Aldi and Lidl, the German retailers, the big box retailers, the discount retailers are taking over uh, that market. Something like I think 70% of households uh, in research suggest that they it might not be their main shop, or maybe it's their main shop and they top up with, uh, with luxury stuff on the side. But the big box retailer is, is growing worldwide. So we've got both the models. The big box is actually the Walmarts and the Tesco's. Mm. Uh, the LD and the Little is our KitKat Express model, okay. which is a, a limited range product uh, in a beautiful little environment, and it's close to your home. So the location of those stores are different. Mm. The big box store you can't have uh, in the center of town. Just not going to work. Uh, your cost won't, won't allow it. Give me a sense of your take of the South African economy. We contracted 1.2% in the first quarter. Lesitja Khanyakho putting a very brave face um, on whether or not we're going to see a recession this year. There's arguments for and against. We had the Brexit vote, which is actually, I would argue, counting in South Africa's favour from the point of view it's creating global instability. Central banks aren't going to raise interest rates for some time, mm. reduces pressure on Lesitja Khanyakho. And actually, we have a fairly smooth ride for at least the rest of 2016. Concur? To a certain degree, we may well be uh, seeing that future with a little bit of luck. Uh, I do think, however, that we're sitting in, a, in an environment, particularly here in the southern tip of Africa, where it's, where it's tough to do business these days. It's not that easy. People don't have the money. We're not be having the investment levels that we should have across the country. No. We were talking earlier just if you sit in Santon or if you sit in I mean, Midrand. I, I sit in this bubble, and this bubble is a very prosperous bubble. Yes. The, this yes. is the beautiful Michelangelo Towers in the yeah. background there yeah. and all of these head offices and the Gautrain station and the Gautrains are full during rush hours. This is a booming yes. part of the country, Absolutely. but this is not the country. But you move 100 kilometers from here and it's a different story altogether. So you, get, you may well even have... Uh, the economy shrinking in the smaller towns in yeah. our country and growing over here, and that's how we end up with half a percent if we're lucky this year. What, what, is, what does your model tell you about, uh, about that one, Raz? Good for me. Good for you. It's fabulous because for you. But are you growing fast enough to, to, to capitalize on the opportunity? The biggest issue we have is real estate. So we now, you know, we have a property arm of our business, so we really focus you on that part. We're now starting to acquire our own buildings uh, to put in our, our stores because you can't find enough sites available which doesn't tell me that the economy is in trouble.
I mean, you, you can't con- find a site. That's the great contradiction. You look at the share prices of the, the Truvers of the world, the Fashini groups of the world. These guys, by hell or high, come hell or high water, make money. And, and they are the, the big landlords. I mean, they're the big tenants in, in so many look, of these properties. I tell you, we, we, now that we're trading in, in another continent, uh, in another country like the UAE or Dubai itself, I can tell you to do business in South Africa, or I'm not going to speak for the Africa, but in South Africa, it's a hundred times easier. <laughs> <laughs> so much, so much for that thought, Richard. <laughs> but people, we, we tend to to be very hard on the Department of Trade and Industry and on Rob Davies and say you put some obstacles yeah. to work. It's much harder in so Dubai. So where I'm coming from, 20 years ago when I started the business, it took me half a day to get all the admin and, yeah. and finance and compliance issues sorted out. Today, when we start a cash converter store, I have a whole finance and admin department looking after all the registrations and all the compliances. That it may take 30 man days to kick that off to ensure that that business is compliant. And then uh, through the period of the 10-year franchise agreement, we're looking at a continuous hand-holding all the time because I can't have my franchisees looking after finance and admin no. and compliance. They've got to be selling and lending money. Absolutely. And, and that's, I think, where my context is coming from. Mm. I haven't got the experience like Rio's It probably depends on the business, but the regulatory framework uh, in, in, an, in a country like Dubai is far worse than South Africa. Not that we don't have regulations. I mean, we follow it. Yeah, you, you but, but need to, to follow but, it. But to Riaz's point, that this economy isn't an economy that is dying. You, you've got a, you've got a different feel of it. I Richard. don't think I'm saying it's dying. I think I'm saying it's kind of hard work at the moment. We're very fortunate it in our industry. Work. It is. But we're very fortunate. The wind's behind us. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I would like to, particularly in the context of growing our country, I would like to see it much easier for the average entrepreneur to get out there and start making widgets rather than worrying about all the other aspects no, no. that take taking box, Ticking box, the boring mm. stuff yes. that, that actually takes the joy out of living, yeah. yes. Absolutely right. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming all the way from Dubai. We haven't had a guest fly in, especially oh. for us from Dubai. I don't think he came specially, but it's nice to have him anyway. Richard McIver, nice <laughs> to have you. Thank you. General Manager, Cash Converters. And Riaz Ghani, Joint Chief Executive of the Kit Kat Group. More investing opportunities, more obstacles, more trials and tribulations, and lots of opportunities next time on The Moneymakers. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.